see that in there. Uh, you'll see some fitness equipment replacement, uh, senior citizens at the Simmons Center Furniture. There's money in there for the printing of our playbook, which is the parks program that shows where all the recreation classes are. Um, water and wastewater fund, that field tech and that clerk receptionist, that is one where, again, we think it's necessary, but honestly, there, there's just water wastewater fund. As we went over Thursday night, there's no money. So we're saying no to that. Um, annual transfers there to the water and wastewater for the tank debt service and uh, for the reclaimed water service. You see that irrigation pump repair, $40,000. We talked about that a little bit or not when Mr. Price asked about boosted. That is some money that we have that actually, uh, you may remember Chesapeake was going to want to take water from the golf course pond and take it over to a, a pad site to drill. And we agreed that we wrote up the contract and everything. We were going to send water for our gas drilling rate and all that kind of good stuff. But um, what we told them was it, it's not boosted. You've got to boost it to get it there. They were going to have to set pumps over there. And so we said for the privilege of doing that, you're going to have to uh, give us some money. And where we based this amount of money on largely was that pump house over there has four pumps at the golf course and they're about $10,000 each to replace. So Chesapeake, as part of executing that agreement, deposited in the city's account $40,000 and it is earmarked for irrigation pump repair. It's been there, but this is just you all authorizing us to actually use it. It doesn't mean we're going to use it this year. The Scott has nursed along the pumps and they're still doing fine, but it's one of those things where he could call tomorrow morning and say, we've lost a pump. It seems a little silly we have the money, but this is now authorizing us us to spend that money. So I, I, you're authorizing that there. There's not really new money, if you will. And they never proceeded with that. So they simply gave us the money and then never we're, proceeded. We're we, there was no refund clause in that. So we basically, they have provided the funds for our pump replacements when those are required. Good. You'll see our transfer to miscellaneous creek maintenance. Uh, the reason I point that one out, that's kind of one of those funds where we try to maintain that minimum balance. Public works. Richard Ross specifically has been doing a really good job over the last few years. They are really working through all of our creek system and, and spending the money that we're giving them to keep that cleaned out, uh, which again, I don't know that people really care about right up until the time that we get money <coughs> flooded and, and everybody's really, really happy that that has been taken care of and it's, it's not the <coughs> laws that are hanging up on bridges and all that. Kind Is of Chesapeake thing. drilling anywhere in U.S. now? No. Or they're just some of the wells that have drilled, they're maybe taking some gas out there, if there's any in there. The last time I checked, there was one active rig in Tarrant County. And I don't mean Chesapeake, I mean wow. one active wow. Arnold Shell rig in Tarrant County. There's, there haven't been any drilling in the years. Wow. Besides that, Chris, you have DR201. Isn't that, is that just a direct reimbursement disaster? Uh, this is not where we do the house from. Is that what you're talking about? No, the disaster from disaster 1201. You know, we, we applied for some reimbursement for the on our, on our Hurricane Creek. Is this showing that? No, that money no. was deposited right. and went back against directly against the expenses. This is actually transferring money from our drainage operating into our CIP for next year's Creek name. So just DR 201 is just representing that account number? Yeah, that DR. is just the project number. That if we're you go over here to your capital book and go to yeah. drainage funded tab, you're going to see DR our, our vernacular. That's a DR drainage project 1201. Because we had disaster declaration. They had to use the same yeah. number. <laughs> no, that was that money we did receive back, and that reimbursed us for the cost of that we had incurred with that last storm, and that was put back against. Because we just put it right back in, in yeah. that fund. We did. Okay. okay. And then the last thing I'm going to point out to you is using the Texas Star Golf Course Reserves, we're going to do a little capital project to do some renovation to the maintenance building. It hasn't been touched since 1996, and I feel really old because I was here when that building was built. It's kind of my first go-around that we're renovating something that I was here when we were building. So, so um, that is, is there anything on that list that you feel like that either should not have been funded, that was funded, or that obviously you expressed some things that, that we need to look at down the road, but are that on the supplemental side with those positions, in order if we wanted to fund a code officer, we would have to delete something. There simply isn't the dollars available to do that. 
um, but uh, unless we deleted something else. Um, but it, it, are there other things that you all feel like we should have done or should not have done? I just have a question. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, on number, uh, on the first page on number 10, 30, uh, 34,500, the um, ISO consultant. Yes. Could you help me understand that? That, when you heard us talk about Mike Peach the other day, if you recall, you allowed us about, I think it was like $5,000 in the current budget to do some preliminary work. And then ISO will actually come in, and I believe they're scheduled to come in either December or January. And Mike Peach, this is his fee, to actually do the full review with ISO to get our new rating. And that is his consultant fee to, to do that, that rating for us. So all he's done right now to date is kind of just some initial preliminary work. This is the full re-rate. Thank you. Any, you, someone else had a question? Was that? Aaron. Sure. Mr. Bynum, you had a question? Uh, I guess the question I have was, Chris, on our, uh, on our dog pound, the work that's been done down there with the fence in that area, we can share with the council what's been done. The GAP group is really pleased with that. The GAP is very important to what we do down there. So if you just share with the group a little bit what we've done there. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, just animal, op animal control operations in general, I'm pretty excited about. We, we got, you know, we had some retirements there, and I mean, that's, we hate to lose those people, but you get, in our case, I say new people, it's, it's our folks that we able to get promoted and they're excited. And, and I mean, that, if you get a chance to go to the animal shelter, I would encourage you to go down there anytime, walk in, Unannounced, uh, they're doing a great job. That place is clean as a whistle. Uh, and what they have done, and Mr. Bond pointed out, he is on the shelter advisory board. He's council representative. We've got a vet uh, who uh, this has been her first year. She's just about completed. Uh, Dr. Moss was our longtime vet on that board, and she stepped down. And we have a new vet, and she's doing a great, great job. She's gotten real involved with the Gap. Program. She's hosted the Gap Girls out at her pet clinic and done some little educational stuff for them. And same again, not Dr. Moss does a great job, but you get a new vet in there and they've got new fresh ideas, and that's kind of invigorating. Um, and then Gap is so critical to what we do out there. We you want to talk about our operation? We couldn't run that thing. We can't run it. We, well, with short of hiring yeah. more people. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they do a great, great job, and, and honestly, we try to do our best to keep them happy. Um, as you know, we did a deal with them where we're making an honorary uh, a contribution to their GAP club uh, for their efforts uh, on a quarterly basis. It's a small amount of money, but again, it just kind of helps them see the value of that. And, and, and honestly, they turn around with that money and they fund everything that they do. At the <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, I'm not uh, put that in perspective. That's like a thousand dollars. It's a thousand dollars. And for that, they come in and work on Saturdays <laughs> and adopt out our pets, and then they take that thousand dollars and put it back into work for our shelter. So I, it, it is a pretty amazing thing. No but the, the concern was is that we weren't, we did not have the resources to staff that properly for the weekends for adoptions. And, and they were upset and you know, it was kind of a trickle down effect. You know, it, was, it just wasn't working well. And there was a, a concern about that. And we said, would y'all be willing to work the Saturdays and let us make a contribution? Not, not they were volunteering their time. The contribution is to the Yacht Club. They said, love that idea. So they're coming out there and actually working and doing the adoptions. We're contributing $1,000 a quarter, <laughs> or I think that maybe 12 I think it was $1,000. 1000 a quarter, and, and they plug um, right back into the... And then they use that money to, uh, if there's an injured animal, to get, uh, oh, the, to help uh, adopt out the, the dogs and cats from our pound. So I don't really know how you get much better of a win with that. And they're happy, our employees are happy, and right now we have just, that has been incredible. And so, specifically what Mr. Bottom was talking about, the, we've always had an area behind the shelter that it was just a grassy area that they would go exercise dogs or walk dogs or you know take them out for a break. Um, but in working with Gap, within a reason, we occasionally say to them, well, what, you know, what would make your job easier? What, what would be good? And so they asked if, if that area, which was just fenced in, could have you know, a little bit like our dog park, you know, an old piece of culvert or a, an old uh, fire hydrant that, 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 that gone out of service, just kind of make it a little more friendly. Well, the guys kind of ran with that. We had a Boy Scout do a project. We had <laughs> service team group that came out if you go back there now they've got the same thing in the dog park a culvert that's had dirt piled up on either side that the dogs run over and through an old fire hydrant uh, the guys have done some little things just uh, they, they ran water or the process of running water out to that and putting a little uh, faucet out there where the girls can give the dogs a drink or give them a little 
a cool down or whatever. So it's, it's little things, but it just makes those folks so happy. And then recently, uh, they asked for, and we did, we fenced in another smaller area adjacent to that. So when somebody comes to look uh, to adopt a dog, they may take two or three dogs out, or the dogs may already be out. Um, but when somebody gets particularly interested in a certain dog, well then the staff with the gap rules can bring that one dog into this smaller area, and uh, the person can kind of play and interact with the dog there without the other one to kind of see a little bit more about the personality. So they're little things, but they have just been very, very appreciative. Uh, we actually invited Stephanie uh, Villa, who is their sponsor, uh, to our last animal shelter advisory board meeting, and she gave a, an update. It was just we didn't do it for this reason, but she was very complimentary of the staff in the city. And so that I just tell you that to tell you that relationship is it's always been good, but it is just getting it's just getting better. So we, we will do everything. I, they've got I'm gonna get the date wrong, Mr. Bonham, but September something is the. Is the <coughs> uh, the pet fair uh, and we'll participate in that school. at Trinity High School. Y'all know this spring they had a walk and it they took the proceeds of that and, and uh, it benefited uh, David Hopper's family and it, this, so the ties are just back and forth and it's been a really good really good thing. So I was sitting there the other night thinking that uh, when Lou had his uh, presidential service awards and it was <coughs> a neat ceremony and I was kind of it's amazing to me the <coughs> amount of hours that people volunteer to this city, but there are other places in parks and in Gap and the animal shelter where we have folks uh, put in lots of hours as well, uh, and, and my hope may be that we maybe try to look for a little way to do some recognition for them. Those folks don't, it's just like in, in, the, in the police department, those folks are not doing that for the recognition, no, but it is sometimes nice to be recognized. The, the one thing, so I went to the clear the shelters a couple weeks ago. Are you the one that got all the animals? All the dogs? <laughs> no. so we cleared. <laughs> no. But when you do go visit the shelter, just check out the the stuff on the walls, the photos, the bulletin boards, the pictures that the Gap Club has added value to that location. So it's it's a home feel yes. without just the big old cylinder block wall. Yes. So. And our cost of service is double, almost triple in the last year. But because of the proactive approach that our folks are taking down there. Yes, they, we, we get a quarterly report uh, on with, with calls for service, which can mean anything from my cat stuck in a tree to it, it can be anything, but dead animal on a road. Uh, and that has gone up, but a lot of that is uh, in the last year, year and a half or so, with some of those staff changes, we're being much more proactive uh, from the standpoint of being out in the community and patrolling the street, and if you see uh, you know, a roadkill situation, they're taking care of that rather than waiting for somebody to call in. Uh, and, and so that, I mean, those are all, those are all good things just to improve that service. Jay, I was appreciative of what our guys do when I saw the number that they came out with the other day from Dallas on the number, estimated number of stray animals yes. that they yes. had yes. In, wow. in South Dallas, and I bet it was 8,500 hundred animals that they yeah. I know, oh my gosh, that they've what, identified that they've identified yeah now what a mammoth task so you know <coughs> we may get a, a loose pooch here and there but I can't imagine trying to get after 8500 of them so uh, anyway those guys do really good job. a lot of size on poles the girls awareness program and those are, are for the most part you know high school uh, uh, girls that that they have the sponsor Stephanie and but those ladies are passionate about that, and I can't tell you how it's so funny to me because we just can't imagine doing it without them. And they will come in and say they are concerned that the city might not allow them to continue. And we're like, why would y'all think that? <laughs> we can't think without you. But then they I tell mean, us they had one city that will yeah, not allow. They they have they have not always had the same reception from all cities, and we say to them, we can't imagine doing it without you. Probably had and some city attorney who say, yeah, there's some yeah. liability here. Their right? biggest fear is that, that the city would not yeah. allow them to continue, and we're like, we don't even know how we would operate without you. So uh, it's been an incredibly successful program. Um, I think we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back Thank and then um, have any Let's final follow-ups and if any concerns at all on the budget before you touch on some of our other topics but it's uh, five after ten 
we take a break and then also we'll try to get your food orders. Looks like you're ready. So uh, yeah. do you have menus that you yes. can distribute to their places? I'll distribute them and I'll head back to the grill, give you some time to look at okay. it. Okay. You know, yeah. And then if you just maybe it come back here shortly and then sure. we'll be all be ready with our orders for you. No longer so, than ten minutes. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. You're well, you don't have to bend down for this. You walk by it so quick. I can walk under it. It doesn't even. I don't even know. You're right. So mean. There's so many people are bending down to go under it. Go for it. Just don't stand in front of it. Get that little one eye out.